In this episode of The Butt Chronicles, we take a look at Beavis and Butthead, episode 39, Tornado. Uh, welcome to Industrial Industries World Radios, The Butt Chronicles. Uh, you said welcome. Uh, oh god. Hey ladies and gentlemen and butt munches alike, welcome to The Butt Chronicles. Your audio guide to everything Beavis and Butthead. And I'm your host, DJ Glowing Ice. Today we are taking a look at Beavis and Butthead episode 39, Tornado. It first aired on MTV on September 14th, 1993, and that's it for now. So what happens with Beavis and Butthead in Tornado? Let's check it out. The episode begins at Beavis and Butthead's house as they sit on the couch watching Barney the Dinosaur on TV. Beavis is eating cookie dough from the tube. A close-up of the tube reads, Mrs. Sugarlip's Old-Fashioned Fudge Hunk Cookie Dough. On the TV, we see Barney the Dinosaur surrounded by children as he's standing next to a heated oven. Barney says, Okay, everybody, the cake should be ready now. Why don't you sing a song while I take it out of the oven? Barney then jumps and says, Stupendous! The TV cuts to a shot of the kids as they sing, There's a cake in the oven, so sweet and delicious. There's a cake in the oven, we love to eat cake. We then cut to a shot of the oven as Barney puts his hands inside and moves them around. He pulls them back out and starts screaming as his hands are now on fire. He puts his hands in the air and screams, I'm burning! Kids, help! This sucks! As the kids are screaming too, a slide then comes onto the TV, displaying a picture of a low-budget looking Big Bird. The low-budget Big Bird also has text reading, technical difficulties. (laughs) Cool, laughs Butthead. Beavis, still munching on cookie dough, yells, Fire! 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 Butthead grabs the cookie dough from Beavis and says, Don't bogart my log, dude. And he then changes the channel to the Montel Williams show. On the show, Montel is holding a microphone to a woman in the audience, who says, Why did you enlist if you didn't want your breasts fondled? The audience then claps. The boys laugh and Beavis says, Yeah! Really? Back to the TV, Montel Williams gets interrupted by an emergency screen reading, A News Center Nature Emergency. Cut to a weatherman next to a map of the Highland region, as he says, Ahoy, weather fans! Captain Dick Jackman here at the News Center Weather Console. A graphic of tornado funnels appear on the map as he goes on saying, My trusty radar tells me there's a line of tornadoes forming in the Western County region. I'll have devastation footage at 6, plus the preschooler of the week. Butthead, now wide-eyed, says, Whoa, we're there, dude. Yeah, (laughs) Where? The trailer park, dumbass. Oh yeah, (laughs) tornadoes are cool. Next, we see the boys riding bikes on the street against the strong winds of the storm as the sky is filled with dark clouds above. Beavis' bike is red and Butthead's bike is green with a tiny front tire. As empty cans and brush fly past them, Beavis says, Tornadoes are cool. They can drive matches through a 2x4. Yeah, a tornado could smash a poodle's face with a brick. Yeah. It can suck a man's heart out of his chest and show it to him before he dies. Yeah, it could like pick up a phone booth and move it five miles away and then put it back without scratching it. The boys then reach the entrance of the trailer park. The entrance of the trailer park has a banner above it reading, Almost Florida Mobile Community. In the trailer park, once you enter it, the street goes all the way straight down, with mobile homes on each side of the street. The boys look, and Butthead says, cool, as a family in a red pickup truck full of their belongings drive past them and out of the park. The boys then spot two chicks next to a trailer, waving the boys to come on over. The boys abandon their bikes, 
and fight against the wind to walk up towards the chicks. As we see the two chicks, the chick on the left, in a country accent, says, Hi, I'm Lolita, and this is Tank Array. Lolita is a black chick wearing a tan sports bra, dark colored shorts, and black high heels. Tank Array is a white chick with dirty blonde hair, wearing big hooped earrings, a tore up denim white t-shirt exposing her stomach, and Daisy Duke denim shorts, along with flip flops. Tank Array says, Since we're all about to die, we were wondering if you guys would like to be our last boyfriends on earth. The boys, wide eyed and stunned, just laugh until a small statue of the Virgin Mary flies by and hits Butthead upside the head. Beavis catches the statue and Butthead shakes his head and says, Uh, okay. Great, let's go inside says Tank Array. The boys follow Lolita and Tank Array into their trailer home as the door slams shut from the wind. Inside, all four of them are sitting on a gray couch. The boys are sitting in the middle with their shirts off as Tank Array sits next to Beavis and Lolita sits next to Butthead. I'm getting a wood row, says Beavis. Beavis leans into Tank Array and then Butthead puts his hand on Lolita as Butthead says, Hey, baby, you wanna... As they're doing this, both of the chicks look scared as rumbling from outside gets louder and louder until the trailer is sucked up into the tornado, breaking up and scattering the four everywhere. An angled shot from above, looking down on the trailer court, shows all of the other trailer homes rising up from the tornado. Beavis and Butthead, still shirtless, are now swirling around inside the tornado as toilets and other debris fly around them. Beavis, with his blue Metallica shirt in hand, says, This sucks! We were gonna do it! Beavis flies towards Butthead, and they fly together. You mean, I was gonna do it, replies Butthead. You were just gonna spank your monkey. You wish, Dillweed. The boys scream as the tornado moves across a field, and spit Beavis and Butthead out from the top. The boys free fall from the sky and land on their backs into the grass below. As they lay there, embedded in the grass, looking up at the sky, a shadow of a phone booth grows larger and larger. The boys then scream as it falls horizontally, crushing them both. A second phone booth then falls on top of the first one, and a bald man with glasses and a suit opens up the door to the phone booth, and climbs out and runs off. The next scene, we are back at Beavis and Butthead's house, as the boys seem to be okay as they're sitting on the couch watching TV. Hey, Butthead, you think those two chicks are alive? Of course not, ass munch. They would have tried to find us by now. We then cut to Lolita and Tank Array, as they're in Munchkin Land from the movie Wizard of Oz. As they stand on the yellow brick road talking to a group of munchkins, Lolita says, Hi, I'm Lolita, and this is Tank Array. Tank Array says, A couple of skeeves may try to follow us. Can we stay with you guys for a while? The munchkins all look at each other smiling, and then they air guitar. And that's Beavis and Butthead in Tornado. Now let's check out the music videos. <laughs> The first music video is Just One Fix by Ministry. The boys like the video, they headbang to it, and they like the tornadoes and the old dude in the video. Beavis says that the video is almost entirely cool, and all it needed was just to show someone puking. Butthead says, so let it be done, as the video then shows a teenage boy puking in a sink. Seeing the kid puke, Beavis screams and says, that was disgusting. Next is Balls to the Wall by Accept. And the boys laugh. And they also say that the video sucks and wonder what the singer is doing on stage as he looks to what Beavis describes him as special. As the band sings Balls to the Wall, Butthead says, Well, he is saying balls, and normally that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. But under these circumstances, it sucks. Beavis says that even if the video had fire, it would still suck. 
Butthead says that the band Crocus is coming to kick their ass, and it's the night of the living bands that suck. The next music video is Naughty Girls Need Love 2 by Samantha Fox. Seeing Samantha Fox in a leather jacket start singing, Butthead says, Whoa, she's one of those grubby girls. And then when she sings, Sex was something I just had, Butthead says, Whoa, <laughs> she just had sex? Why don't they show that? Looking at the male backup dancers spinning around, Butthead says, It wasn't with any of those guys. The boys say if there were some explosions and better singing, and not any of the guys, it'd be a better video. Then they change it. And the last music video is 50 Foot Queenie by PJ Harvey. And Butthead says that the song is really noisy. And Beavis says that noise is cool. Watching PJ Harvey sing, Beavis says, This chick's mouth is crooked. Uh, <laughs> I wonder why. Butthead mentions that the song's name is 50 Foot Queenie and that he'd like a 50 Foot Weenie. Beavis replies with, That would be cool too. And that's the music videos. Now let's get into the fun facts. This episode marks the first appearance of the characters Lolita and Tanqueray. They're more smaller minor characters, but they do have very memorable moments throughout the Beavis and Butthead series. Lolita and Tanqueray are teenage, typical trailer trash, and they talk with a Texas accent and they do attend school with Beavis and Butthead, so they are around the age of 15 or 16. This first appearance of the girls were very underdeveloped, and Lolita in this episode is a black chick, but in later episodes that she appeared in, she's a white chick with brunette hair. Tanqueray looks different in later episodes as well, just a lot more skanky looking and less country like she did in this episode. The full realization of what Lolita and Tanqueray were expected to look like were just think of groupies for Guns N' Roses back in 1987. How Lolita and Tanqueray looked in this episode to other episodes, the reason why the change happened was that this episode needed to get out and Mike Judge, the creator, he just uh, he just didn't like how they looked. It's not what he expected. So he then directed animators to develop them more, put in a lot more details, and that's how they wound up with the final look that they have. Lolita and Takeaway tend to be known for their opening line, which Lolita says, Hi, I'm Lolita, and this here's Takeaway. Over the series, they tend to use Beavis and Butthead for their own benefit. Lolita and Tanqueray are both voiced by Tracy Grandstaff, who also does the voice for Daria. This episode did get censored and edited as the fire controversy happened, so the part where Barney's hands catch on fire when the boys are watching TV got trimmed out. And then also when Barney's yelling, Oh! Oh! I'm burning, kids! Help! This sucks! It was cut to him saying the line, Kids, help! This sucks! Also, another thing that got cut, obviously, was Beavis yelling, Fire! 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 In the music video, Balls to the Wall by Accept, there's a part in there where Beavis is flicking a lighter and saying, Maybe he's just special. That wound up being edited out, as well as him saying, Even if they had some fire in this video, it would still suck. And if you haven't seen the movie Wizard of Oz and didn't make the connection, Lolita and Tanqueray being in Munchkin Land is a parody of the movie Wizard of Oz. Tornado is the 8th episode of Season 3 of Beavis and Butthead, and it's the 39th episode overall. And IMDB, the Internet Movie Database, gives Beavis and Butthead Tornado a 7.7 .7 out of 10 rating. Now, I'll give you my review. I did see this episode growing up, so lots of fond memories watching this. I didn't remember too much of the details, I just kind of knew the concept of how the episode went. I remember my dad always laughing when Lolita would, you know, greet the boys saying, Hi, I'm Lolita, and this here's Tanqueray. 
They're nice little characters, and at this point in this episode, the boys were about to score. But as we all know, the boys never tend to score throughout the series. Although sometimes they think they did score, but they didn't. But at this point, man, they were there. They were this close. And I don't know what it was. They were wanting to be putting on the moves. They were laying game down. And then all of a sudden, they just were backed off and weirded out. Like, hey, it's the last time on Earth. You're spending with Beavis and Butthead. Come on, girls. This is the best you're probably going to get in this trailer court. Anyways, nevertheless, yeah, the boys didn't score in here. And they wound up getting crushed by a... (laughs) A telephone booth and the next scene they're back at home as they should be they always tend to uh, recover very quickly after a trip to Highland Hospital the Barney the Dinosaur one is uh, I always remember that them watching that uh, that that was probably one of the bigger highlights. Not even them being in a tornado was the big highlight for me in this episode. It was just them watching the uh, parody of shows. The Montel Williams show, uh, the woman saying the line about enlisting in the military, uh, that, w- that caught me off guard because I did not remember that as a kid watching it. Um, maybe it just went way past my head. A lot of things went way past my head back in the day. But uh, yeah, that was definitely a nice surprise. That was funny. And um, the little details, Mike Judge always talks about this, how uh, there's it's always the little details that make so much of a difference. In the name of the community, the Almost Florida Mobile Community is, that's perfect. <laughs> So, yeah, I I mean, you know, like the normie people, the people that really don't like Beavis and Butthead or never gave them a chance, uh, they just write them off very easily because all they say is, is Beavis and Butthead just, they just laugh a lot and that's that. And it's like, you you sit down and watch an episode. You you may appreciate the little details like that and uh, enjoy it. But uh, all I could say is, if you don't like Beavis and Butthead, it sucks to suck. Given the story and everything, I'm going to have to give Beavis and Butthead and Tornado a 7 out of 10. There was a lot of funny parts, but there was a lot of parts where it was just like, okay, it's a cool story, but it wasn't really that funny. You get what I'm saying? They were about ready to score, and they didn't. That kind of sucks. That's not funny. (laughs) I felt bad for them. The music video segments in this episode were really cool. But more top tier music video segments in this episode. So that's why I give it a... uh, The story by itself is probably a 5. But given the music videos, I give it a 7 out of 10. So there we go. Beavis and Butthead, Tornado, gets a 7 out of 10.